Hey guys, welcome to yet another business session with me, Kshitij and Kabir on this live stream on YouTube of Shurguru. So today we are talking about something that has been a question literally all my career life and that is what are good portfolios and how to make them? Yeah, right. that's right. So we will be discussing about portfolios. Why are they needed and how do you actually go about making a portfolio? So Kabir, it's always been a question and we always ask that what do you actually put in a portfolio? Why do you actually need a portfolio? I remember when I started as a photographer and you must, when you started as a photographer, sure. we had to print portfolios. Absolutely. We had to have yeah. a book that we would carry to places we would show to people and prints were what everybody was really talking about correct so what has changed over the years what is that people are doing new and different and how does it really help and what can uh, help people to make it better you're absolutely right uh, it was printed books or printed uh, portfolio uh, carriers or sheets that used to be there we used to get large prints done and you know kind of insert them in sleeves and uh, that, that, that would go into a binder. Uh, so that used to be called a portfolio. Uh, the concept remains pretty much the same but the whole shift from paper, paper to digital has happened in our business, right? So we are no longer or at least to most cases not doing uh, printed portfolios That's now. Right. Yeah. We are doing digital portfolios and digital meaning that they are either available online yeah. or they're available through maybe, uh, you know, some kind of an app that you may have or some kind of a other uh, me mechanism in which you can share your images or share your creations. Now, again, uh, lots of people can use portfolios. Anybody who's doing digital design, anybody who's doing any digital creation yes. can use a portfolio. It can be a graphic artist. It can be a photographer, it can be a filmmaker, it can be a mixed media, uh, meaning they can also do... Uh, an actual physical photograph of a work that they have done, uh, physical work that they have done, capture a photograph and then share it with people. Now the benefit of having a digital portfolio is that firstly there is, uh, compared to what we used to pay, very little cost of creating a portfolio. That's right. Because you know you're no longer looking at the paper quality and no. the, you know, the the kind of printing and you can't go to a you know a average person, you have to go to the best printer to get it done. And you have to look at matte paper, you have to look at, you know, a hundred different kinds of things. Archival paper and whatever used to be there. I know, for photographers, the game yeah. has really changed. And even for filmmakers, uh, we used to burn it on DVDs. Yeah, we used correct. to send pen drive across to our clients. And I remember, uh, this is 2012, when a client actually asked me uh, to send work to him by a courier. And yeah. he wanted to put it in his television to watch it. So, the game has changed over yeah, the years. Correct. No, it has completely and now everything is online. People are creating um, their websites or for that matter, there are platforms, uh, could be uh, Instagram for that matter and you, you are the expert over there. Uh, people are using that as a platform to showcase yeah. their work, showcase their skill, showcase their talent. Now, uh, would you like to talk about Instagram yeah, a I little mean, bit and say yeah, how Yeah, we'll how talk about it a bit. Let's go ahead uh, so and really one thing, discuss about portfolios, how and what they are. Absolutely. Now, coming to the question of portfolios, why are yeah. portfolios necessary in the first place? Uh, my understanding is that as a creator or as an artist, right, you have to show what you do and what is the depth of work that you have, yeah. right? Now, a lot of us... Um, are very uncomfortable with marketing ourselves. A lot, lot of the artists are very uncomfortable with showing off, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the unfortunate or the, you know, the truth of the matter is that till the time you don't blow your own trumpet, yeah. nobody really cares. That's true. Right? So till the time you don't have an amazing portfolio, yeah. it's very difficult for people to actually come up to you and give you business. That is true. At the end of the day, if you're doing it for your own satisfaction, then it doesn't really matter, right? And that, on that only, I mean, I, I remember or I do come across people who are on social media not to use it as a portfolio medium, but to just to upload images and get feedback or maybe 
uh, get uh, get some likes, likes on them and that's pretty much it that's what people have been really focusing on but <clears throat> i feel that social media also has turned around and it's more of a, you can share your instagram profiles Correct. or your facebook pages or even youtube for now uh, right. as a portfolio yeah in fact you know uh, you can also in facebook uh, set up albums and just yep. share that album and restrict <clears throat> the other ones yeah uh, like you could do on your own website that you have certain sections open on the basis of certain passwords which go to uh, certain clients. So all that is possible. So let's discuss uh, Chitra, uh, the different ways in which digital portfolios can be created. Sure. And of course, we'll also, uh, I'll share my experiences and I'd love for you to share your experiences with them. So I think the most, the easiest and the cheapest way to you know showcase a portfolio these days uh, and that is a little, uh, what should I say, uh, lazy way is to create a, a, a cloud drive folder. Yeah, but like right? Google Drive. Or but it's very yeah, effective. Dropbox, Google Drive yeah. or anything. Yeah, so you, know, you could have a Dropbox, Google Drive or any of these yeah. uh, you know, f web folders. Uh, create separate folders for different kinds of work. Let's say if you do architectural work yeah. or do yeah. food photography, then don't mix it up. Create mm -hmm. separate folders. And let's say if you're talking to a restaurant, then don't send them portraits. Definitely. Right? Don't send them 200 shots with, you know, 10 of these, 10 of these, 10 of these. It doesn't, they don't really care. Send them just your good food shots, right? So that's a good way of doing it. It's convenient. There is zero cost in it. Uh, it's fast. You have access to that on your phone. Uh, somebody calls you or messages you. You quickly send them a link. Things move forward, right? But of course, you know, there is no uh, style in showing those images right. in the sense that, you know, they are very uh, vanilla, it's very plain, you click on the image and then you move it. So, you know, there is no, uh, there is no particular uh, personal style that comes out. Um, you can, of course, put uh, watermarks and things like that, that you'll have to do on the image before yeah. you upload it because, you know, the platforms don't let you do that. No, they don't. But, uh, if you want to be able to showcase your images or, uh, you know, could be video content as well, then another low cost way of doing it is to be able to set up your own website for that matter. Yeah, and I, I feel that uh, websites have gone cheaper. Uh, I, I remember when developing a website would actually cost, uh, what, 10,000 rupees plus. And yeah. Nowadays, there are platforms like Wix that yeah. allow you to do it in less than like, I think 5,000 rupees a year or even yeah, yeah. much lesser than that, Absolutely. depending on the kind of packages that you create. Yeah, okay. And you can start with a free version, develop it, then release it with a pro version. And, and even domain, templates, names, yeah, yeah. domain names have gone so cheap. Correct. Uh, you know, you could buy a good domain name, which is, you know, to do with your yeah. work uh, and, and then kind of link it to that. Right. And, uh, and then that becomes your calling card or it becomes your portfolio into uh, things. Now there are other uh, more exclusive um, uh, sites which cost as much as 10 to 15 dollars a month, right? Which again is not a huge cost if you take a look at it compared to what it used to be in the past where photographers especially have, uh, you know, uh, extensive range of, uh, you know, uh, uh, templates available in different ways. And those sites are made for photographers themselves, right? So um, you can choose one of those sites as well. And then create, again, and they give you drag and drop. Very and they true. give you, let's say, 1 GB or more uh, file space. Of course, you won't put very high resolution photographs on that. You don't want them to be downloaded and used for and, other purposes. Just on that, uh, sorry to cut in. Guys, yeah. you can actually optimize your images for web in which uh, a 20 MB file could go down as low as 400 KBs or 300 KBs without actually losing quality because in the end, your end user is either watching it on web or they're watching it on their phone. So nobody's really using big screen televisions or big screen monitors to watch it. And what I uh, I remember during lockdown, we did this uh, live session with, uh, Manish. Uh, yeah, with Manish, Manish yeah. Who's, who's like a web expert. And he gave this tip that every time you upload images or videos, uh, mm. just transform them uh, to uh, uh, work for web so yeah. the resolution uh, the size the file size goes down without losing quality which Absolutely was very right. interesting yeah and and he had a few very interesting tips and tricks and uh, we still have a recording for that yes, we on do. our it's, it's uh, on the app it's on the that's app. correct so for those of you who are interested in going through that uh, 
uh, amazing session with uh, Manish D'Souza, who is an amazing expert in web. Uh, it's on the Shoot Guru app. Uh, look for a webinar, uh, web session on business uh, of photography, uh, business as, as in the section of uh, recorded content. And you'll be able to see very interesting things. So coming back, um, let's get into uh, you know a few tips, uh, Shitaj, why I feel, which are very very critical for people to understand uh, what you need to take care of while creating a portfolio. Yeah. And there may be some mistakes that people may be making. Uh, so if you are just starting off, or even if you have a web portfolio, if you have a website. I'm sure some of these things you can still pick up and improve on your Very true. Uh, you know, portfolio that you're putting out. Now, I'm hoping that there are uh, people's, the need itself of why you need a good portfolio, that is very clear. Uh, but a few things I want to say. First, a portfolio or a website or a, any kind of cloud drive or cloud portfolio is not a repository. When I say repository, it means that it is not a place where you put all your photographs. Very true. Right? It is the place where you want to show your best work. Yeah. So it's like it's like a showcase. It's, it's, like a, it's like a window to the world of what you create. Absolutely. It's not a storeroom. No. Right? It's the front of the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Now, when you go shopping, they put the best stuff that is true in the front of the window, right? That is true. Yeah. Right. This is just that. If I were to not have a front door and people are forced to see everything and then take a decision, maybe some people just walk across and that is know, may not come in, but they see some amazing styles, amazing jackets that I'm selling right there they will be drawn in. So that is something which attracts people to Absolutely. kind of walk in or even dig deeper. I mean, I still remember uh, learning uh, from BNI that yeah. you're, you have only the first 15 seconds to actually make an impression. Make an impression and that is what we call as the elevator pitch That's or correct. the 15 second pitch in which uh, the first 50 seconds will raise a question in the mind of the viewer and the viewer will ask the next how, what and where. Correct. And once they do that, then you get the step in to tell them more because yeah. uh, if we do this exercise wherein uh, if I ask you what you do and you start telling me about what you do, I can stop you anywhere I want. But if you give me a kind of a loop and mm. I ask you how do you do it, that is when now I have the, ask the question so you won't, I won't stop you. you. So absolutely very well said Shitaj. Uh, the portfolio should raise yeah. a question in the person's mind. Okay, tell me more or tell me more about you or how do you do this, right? So once you start engaging with the customer or a prospective customer, that's when you have hooked them in and they are able to then, uh, you know, have a conversation with you. Of course, they may have their needs may be different from what you've already shown them or whatever it is. But the fact is, the communication has started, right? Yeah, true. And that is what is very critical for you to then close the deal very on the true. product. Now, um, again, a uh, lot of us make these mistakes. I have made these mistakes in the past that uh, I've put maybe from one shoot, I like 10 images but, and I was not able to select. All of them were my kids. <laughs> all of them were my babies. And I said, you know what? I love you all. All of you go into my portfolio, right? And that is mistake number one, right? The client doesn't care. He yeah. wants to see or she wants to see one image that will showcase your breadth as a creator or your depth as a creator or your thinking as a creator. That what are you thinking while you created all that content? So forget about all your favorite babies. Don't worry about them, but just get that one amazing shot that will really, really captivate your uh, prospective client or the person who's you know looking at the product yeah. uh, at your portfolio to be able to say, oh, okay, show me more or how do you do this? The engagement. So keep that element of mystery. Yeah. Don't lay all your cards on the table right in the beginning. Yeah. And trust in the process that yes, they will get back to you if you show them good stuff. No, but there's always a question that I get and uh, people have this that how do you actually choose what is your best 
work. I mean, if you ask me, like you said, I would love all my babies. I, yeah. I like this film, I like that film, I like this photograph, I like that photograph. It's very hard for me to choose the top three, top five, because it's as if I am, you know, uh, neglecting the other one. So how do you actually go about choosing them? Okay. So um, let me talk from the point of view of photography, for yeah. instance. Now, there are many aspects in photography that how you would actually rate an image or how you would actually qualify an image, right? Mm -hmm. First could be the composition itself. That Okay, are there elements balanced or weighed correctly and do they make a very interesting or coherent shot, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so that's the composition and that's, let's say, the balance of the shot and things like that. Uh, so whenever you're looking at your shots or when you're looking at your photography, do look at all the uh, the rules and the you know the the, the, the what should I say uh, the uh, rules is the right word rules of photography. Uh, does it conform to the rule of thirds? Are you framing it correctly? Yeah. Is the balance correct? Is is it positive space, negative space? You check off all the rules. Now of course you know all rules may not apply to all right. images. But the fact is that, you know, let's at least start right and have as many check off, checked off as possible. Secondly, is it processed correctly as a final output or not? Okay. So right. it should be an end product. It should be an end product. Nice. No questions asked. Uh, you can't show images right off the camera. That's definitely a no-no. People don't care what you shoot like. They want to see what the final product will be. That is true. Like. I mean, there are sometimes mistakes in your uh, raw images that you need to cover up uh, yeah. in post-production and I feel that a, a fully post-produced product is something that will carry on better and get, get you more attractive results. Uh, your clients will be more interested to watch more. Absolutely. Um, and, and taking off from what you just said, there is a limited time available for people to judge, take a decision and then move on. You want to capture their interest for as long as possible, yeah. right? So the more exciting images you uh, show them in succession, more likely they are going, able to see. For instance, if you have 20 images in mm -hmm. your portfolio, okay? If they start losing interest after the fourth or the fifth, right? There's no way in hell they're going to go hmm. to number 20. Very true. Right? But if you have all your exciting images, no repeats, no doubles, etc., lined up one after the other, there's a very great possibility that they will see all the way till the end. Very true. Because I think that will kind of build interest and uh, keep them hooked on. Absolutely right. So you have to look at it from the point of view of the viewer. Yeah. It's not what you want to show them. It's not only what you want to show them. Very true. But it is what they want to see, what they need to see. Yeah. Which brings me to the next thing is that you can create separate portfolios mm -hmm. depending on who is going to view them. Mm -hmm. right? So as I said it earlier, if you are talking to a hotel or for instance a restaurant, right? don't show them portraits. Right? They don't care. Don't show them product shots of handles of, of you know, light fixtures and things like that. You may be a genius at shooting uh, products, but the fact is they want you to shoot food. Food is a product but needs different kinds of skills, mm -hmm. right? It needs styling skills, it may need other skills. Um, so are you showing them the right kind of work? That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Now also within the same category or the same genre of work, are you showing them your best work, which is question number two. Once you've been able to check those boxes, that's when you're ready to see a portfolio. And in yep. fact, uh, on websites or even uh, otherwise, you can create sections and uh, send only those sections or links to those sections to prospective people. Yeah, and drives actually help us there because yeah. we can create folders and share only that folder that we want to share to, That's correct. to the people. And the best bit what I've felt over the, uh, over the past few years is that the Google Drive or even Dropbox allow you to kind of showcase slideshows if you right. are into images or even play playback videos uh, yeah. directly if, if you if you post them uh, send them as links and that works very well true now another thing that you must uh, remember is that in the selection of images you have to be ruthless yeah <laughs> right unfortunately it is very competitive uh, you have to show your best work. You have to be able to show your absolute finest to the mm -hmm. person. 
Now, there is a little bit of a, you know, a caveat over here, which is that you can use a combination of website and drive. Now, we do that in our work. Yeah. We have sections on our website which have different kinds of work showcased. Mm -hmm. But if the client wants to see more in that area, right, or if certain clients uh, are uncomfortable with their work on your website. Very true. Right? So you can create that as a separate drive folder or a cloud folder which is not searchable or is not in public domain, but you can send that to people on request. So for instance, if there's a client who's seen my website and then comes to me, right? Yeah. They say, okay, we like your work, but show us more in this area. Very true. Right? So I give them a special drive link, which will have only photographs which they want to look at. It could be a subset or it could be absolutely new images which could have work for different clients which I have not been able to put on the website. Right? Very true. And, but you can still show them. But mind you, and, and we will do another section on, uh, you know, contractual uh, agreements <laughs> with clients and how you can yeah. showcase that is, I your I think work. that is, again, something which is very, very important, yeah. and, uh, especially for payments. Oh, right? you bet. Uh, you and I also have been facing this. Uh, the, I will not name the clients, but we are going uh, legally against oh, yes. uh, one of them. And I, I feel that freelancers are the most affected by this process of getting payments on time. Correct. And because... They usually don't do any proper legal contracts with their uh, clients. Yeah. They get stuck because they can't really say anything to them. Absolutely right. So yeah, that should be something I think we will take up in the future. Yeah. Uh, just before we continue, we've got Jasraj and Mir who've uh, kind of replied uh, on the, uh, the the chat. Thank you mm -hmm. guys for attending. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you everybody who's joining us today. Uh, again, it was an impromptu live. We actually were stuck yesterday. Technically, we couldn't do a live. Uh, we are still in a new space, so adapting to the new space possibilities is there. Uh, so, Jasraj is saying that he was an intern uh, as a project handler, but he actually learned camera on that project. Okay. So, how does he actually showcase that uh, he uh, knows uh, that he, his learning was the camera work and not just the project handling? So, um Look, that's step two. First, you have to show something. Yeah. Um, unless you know the client, unless you, unless they trust you, otherwise, yeah. they will still need to see something before they engage with you. True. Uh, to be able to say that okay, uh, he may have done this work as far as his own portfolio is concerned, mm -hmm. but he's mm -hmm. done other camera work on other projects. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, having said that, you can also. Let's say if you were, you know, on camera for somebody else, yeah. you can have an understanding with them that you can showcase the photographs that you clicked yeah. or the, you know, if you were shooting video, the footage that you shot on that project, which may not be your project. Right? It could be somebody else's direction. Somebody else could be the main DOP. You could be just an assistant there. But people understand that, you know, you have to build your portfolio. You're here for a career. Just in that, I mean, uh, most of the industries do allow you to do that, but wedding is something that is very sensitive in this yeah. manner. Why? For one simple reason, the bride and groom hired the key photographer or the, the, the main uh, yeah. photographer for their wedding. So they really don't appreciate other photographers uh, Using, publishing yeah. it. Mm. But that can be overcome when you are interning with wedding photographers or when you're working with wedding photographers, you can, uh, during the starting of your internship, ask them whether there could be possibilities of republishing the work that you worked on. Yeah. Uh, give due credit to, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Give due credit to the photographer, to the client. And during your process of interacting with the client on shoot, I have seen people build relationships uh, with, of course, with the permission of the key photographers, right. with the clients and asking them whether you can publish their Im some of their images or not. And that usually works. It helped me. I used to do it like Correct. that. Correct. And it worked. Or if you are collaborating with someone. Yeah. Uh, so both of you have that understanding in the beginning that both of you can use it as individual portfolios as well. Yeah. And that works very well as well. But the understanding could be writing, could be verbal, depends on how close you guys are. 
uh, but is necessary to have an understanding on that Very better true. written than uh, not and just uh, just to kind of get a detailed answer for you uh, if you have worked with somebody on a project uh, and the and the work profile says as a project handler or something like that but the camera work was actually done by you you can use it uh, of course take uh, permissions from the uh, people you worked for one two the better way to do it is create similar kind of projects, similar kind of portfolios yeah. that showcase the skills that you achieved during that shoot and utilize that portfolio to get more work, which really helps. Correct. Uh, no, that's a very good point, Shitit. That portfolio doesn't necessarily mean work yeah. that you've done for a client. Of course. It only means work that you've done. So you could have done it for yourself. You could have done it for your Father, you could have done it for anyone. Very true. It doesn't matter. Till the time it's good quality work, it gives the client or the prospect confidence that yes, you will be able to handle their project. It should be adequate for you to be able to uh, work with even content that you've created for yourself yes. or which has not been done at a commercial level. So on that only, Kabir, I'm glad you picked that yeah. up. Um, just to introduce that, the new Shoot Guru... Uh, uh, place is actually a collaborative space uh, we have set it up in Gurgaon it is open for collaborations to anybody who wants to work on their skills who wants to work on projects you can uh, of course you have to apply but you can come here and work with us uh, upgrade your skills by uh, practicing on different kind of equipment slides um, even editing for that matter and it is the space open for everybody at no cost whatsoever but again it is on application basis only and invite only so all the best for that and hope to see you guys there as well and the bonus with that is that you get to see both of us live <laughs> yeah you get to work with us work and with us. interact with us personally because most of most both of us are mostly here yes these days uh, these days yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay going anyway. ahead uh, yeah yeah so uh, coming to uh, again now, there are two kinds of portfolios. Yeah. I, I, I should have started with this. But anyway, I think it's a good time to talk about yes. it. There are artistic portfolios and there are commercial portfolios. Very true. Right? Very true. Now, the objective for both of them is still to showcase your work. Mm -hmm. So, there is no question on that. Mm -hmm. But the end result or let's say the receiver may be different. So, the receiver for a commercial uh, portfolio could be an agency. Mm -hmm. It could be a direct client. Mm -hmm who ultimately want to hire you as a photographer, as a cinematographer or any kind of work that you do. It could be a graphic designer or whatever. So you are showing things to them that are can be of use in a commercial scenario. True. For instance, let me take the example of product photography. Right mm -hmm. Now, if you are an artist, you are a photographic artist, for instance, and if you want to show your work in a gallery, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to show them product photography. No. Right? They're going to just kick you out of the door. <laughs> right? So you have to show them more artistic or fine art photography images. True. Now, on the other hand, if you go to an agency or if you go to a client and you show them landscapes and if you show them you know, birds <laughs> and the bees, they're going to do the same thing, kick yeah. you out. Yeah. Right? So show them what is relevant for them. Very true. Uh, maybe if they're looking, maybe an e-commerce company who want to hire, I mean, uh, hire you for uh, you know, putting their products on their e-commerce sites and things like that, you have to show them stuff that is relevant to them. Very true. Right? Similarly, if it's a cosmetics company or uh, who also want to use e-commerce or uh, maybe want to use a, sty uh, a styled shoot with mm -hmm. models and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So you will show them stuff which is relevant to them. Sure. Again, commercial. Yeah. It has to be able to sell the product. It has to be able to showcase the product. Not a general good-looking shot, uh, which doesn't do anything, yeah. but it has to be able to showcase the product. So it has to have all the components on marketing and selling of the product. Very That's true. what is the commercial portfolio. Yeah. Again, the other side is an artistic portfolio. Uh, there you are showcasing technique. Uh, there you're showing maybe a connect with uh, your subject or whatever it is. And more importantly, a story that you want to tell. Right, right. right. Again, I'm not saying write a story and paste it under that. <laughs> Don't do that because that means you are not a visual artist. Yeah, because I think yeah. the photos or the videos themselves need to be telling a story. And it's Absolutely not always... Right. 
you don't need to add big captions you don't need to add blogs you don't need to explain to people what you were clicking correct uh, especially for your own artistic work uh, if you do are a, if you're a street photographer or if you're a landscape photographer your work should be doing all the talking and uh, that is what it is really all about absolutely right uh, if you in fact if you have a write up along with a photograph or uh, with a short film etc uh, it may create some interest on the background of it but you should not be able should not be explaining what you have right that's actually will take away from your skill yeah, right yeah because you're using words to depict something where words don't have to be used. very true okay so that's very very critical so uh, then again we spoke about uh, in commercial photography when you're showcasing and when mm -hmm. you're selecting your work if it's been done for clients uh, who are actual companies also showcase your biggest clients first yeah i, mean, I think because it's it's what we say as the hero Absolutely. films or the hero photographs yeah. that are actually uh, being showcased and come on if you go to a, a mall and if somebody shows you bad products right in the beginning you mm -hmm. you won't stay in their store for uh, too long you will just move ahead yeah. similarly if you go on amazon and uh, you look at some products that are coming up uh, and you don't like their quality just by the looking at their images we, you will move, move ahead. ahead similarly uh, in our portfolio also when we are presenting to clients when we are presenting to the end users you need to have your best work out you need to Absolutely. have your best clients and especially if you have ever worked for big names those big names really really help absolutely and if you work for brands and if the brand sh is showing on the photograph yeah. or on the product put that up right in front because yeah. you yeah. know a lot of times people who have uh, you know who are, may not be able to take a decision or are comparing between two uh, photographers or two videographers and they see that you worked with bigger companies right right there is a chance that yes they may be able to go with you because you may have had the right kind of experience True. to be able to handle their project so uh, who you work with also matters very true uh, you may or may not be able to use logos of your clients but the fact is that if you have shot their products uh, then it's pretty much self evident that you know who the client is so right. that way it's it's easy to be able to show that very true. and and there's no shame in you know talking about or showing the products for the work that you've done mm -hmm. because that mm -hmm. is your hard work right of course and that's what you are creating the portfolio for of course okay um any questions that so you would like to so there's one question no. that just raj okay, is asking what is better for a folio adobe spark or vimeo uh, if you're asking for video portfolios spark uh, pages especially adobe spark pages allows you to create these really tight web pages mm -hmm. uh, with, which could be work as a portfolio but understand this it is still not a, a hosting uh, website you have to uh, embed videos else, from yeah. youtube you have to embed videos from vimeo um, so uh, again it can work as a web page yeah. so for a a page to send to a client so that he just clicks on one link and keeps swiping up keeps playing the videos works brilliantly but if you want to showcase everything that you've done till date then vimeo is a better option because vimeo a does not have ads in it it runs very very smoothly uh, second um, it does playback very high resolution has a very clean interface yeah, yeah. and it's easy uh, but be careful with vimeo in india at times if your bandwidth is not allowing you it becomes slow and uh, does slow down the whole process as well so uh, be careful while using both uh, i prefer using youtube and embedding those videos onto any platform that i want to share on correct now uh, one of the other things i want to talk about is um updation yeah right um, see there are two processes that are at work over here one is you are showing your work to people mm -hmm. and then there is some other work that you are currently doing at this point in time true right so while you may have already put in a lot of effort and created your portfolio uh, put it on a website etc but you are continuing to do other good work true so it's very critical that every time you do good work some part of that or maybe the best shots of that or the best uh, clips of that mm -hmm. need to go on to your website yeah, or right. they need to go on to your folders uh, for that category of mm -hmm, work mm -hmm. that's done right now of course you may say that you know um, do i have to keep changing my website and the answer to you is in a way yes you don't have to change the entire website but it's great to keep updating the images uh 
and keep sharing that website on social media as well that you know uh, of course people don't want to go and see the same content again and again but uh, every few days or every few weeks or months let's yeah. say you've updated the entire selection of images uh, keep sharing it so that you get more views and things like that and uh, start working uh, on a dynamic uh, you know uh, creation of work that keeps going there and and there's an easy way to do it nowadays uh, you can actually sync your youtube channel to your website yeah. you can sync your vimeo channel to your website you can also uh, have latest videos popping up on your website every time you update youtube mm -hmm. uh, other than that uh, what i personally feel is that uh, instagram facebook or anywhere they, the images that go up are low resolution mm -hmm. so if you want to really attract people to watch your high resolution images get, give a link back in your bio saying that uh, to view high resolution work of uh, sorry high, high resolution uh, pictures of my work please visit the website and that will actually increase traffic on the website yeah. as well and if there are clients that you know will convert or they're yeah. genuine clients yeah. and yeah. not really looking at you know just looking at the images or your competition mm -hmm. um, you can actually send them links to a drive folder or something where you have a lot more wider selection uh, or more sensitive images on that that can go there so uh, yeah, so many things that you can do. Uh, one of the things that um, works these days mm -hmm. is also creating stories in digital portfolios. Yeah. And uh, what I mean by that is, let's say you have a website. Yeah. You can dedicate one section or you know uh, one separate area in which there can be a series of images related to one shoot that you did. Okay, so for instance, we did an interesting shoot for a heavy engineering company in Indore, mm -hmm. right? Now, for us, it was quite an experience yeah. to go and uh, shoot large uh, equipment and large things. Uh, we, of course, shot products for them. So their final output would feature on the website, yeah. Yeah. but could be in process work or could be different angles which did not make the final cut but were still interesting images yeah. uh, or it could be shots with models that sure. finally didn't make, didn't make, they become stories and they can be actually sequential that, okay, this is where we started, mm -hmm. this is what was done, this was the next experience and things like that. So what that does is that brings you out as a thinking, Very creative true. individual Very true. that people can actually see your process of creation, yep. right? But let me warn you uh, over there those image become, images become boring after a point in time. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to update that section very, very regularly. So like there are stories on Instagram and on other platforms, um, you here it's not a matter of creating a, a video for it, but it's a matter of creating maybe five, six, seven images uh, from the same shoot, could be different angles, could be different moods in the same yeah. shoot itself. Again, don't compromise on the quality of shots. They of still have to be pakka, badhya yeah, quality. Yeah. But maybe the ones that didn't make the final cut, but they were still like 95%, not 100%. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it paints a very interesting picture for the whole journey of that. No, that is true. I've also realized this. If you uh, show uh, the process yeah. uh, of uh, like reaching a particular image, even add some behind the scenes shots yeah. to the whole process, that really attracts a lot of people. Being a photographer, having your portfolio on your Instagram, especially, uh, I see people just posting uh, portraits every day or just posting landscape or they have these uh, styles in which one they would do portrait, one they would do landscape, one yeah. they would do street product or something like that. But what you have to realize is if you show some behind the scenes action, some process based images as well, Correct. that will attract your audience a little more, you will get more traction on social media and that works very well. Absolutely. They want to be able to see you, as I said earlier, as an mm -hmm. artist who is mm -hmm. creating good quality content and thinking of making that work really, really amazing True. work. So the process of thinking, if you involve them in that process, they are more likely to go with you that, okay, yes, I can work with this person. Very true. I like the thought process of this person. Very true. So uh, these were some of the things that, you know, I had, uh, you know, uh, thought mm -hmm. of and I thought I should share. Also share from my experiences uh, from uh, being first portfolio, of course, right. my first portio, portfolio rejected by my <laughs> teachers uh, just because they were, you know, just too many images in that and, you know, they got bored by the end of it. So 
I learned my lesson there, but I hope other people also understand that, yes, you know, you can't put everything, just put the best. So before we actually take up uh, one more question that's popped up, uh, let's do a rewind of what we've learned today. And the take back from today's session has been one, you can have a portfolio either or in a website format or yeah. on social media or, or a drive, or, or drive format. Yeah. To uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, only select images that are the best images. Best of the best. And have variety. Variety, that's correct. And of course, uh, keep updating your portfolio on a very regular basis. Absolutely. If you are creating, another thing is if you're creating a website uh, and if you have different genres of work, for instance, you have architectural work, yeah. you have uh, hospitality work, they may be related, but the fact is uh, hospitality may also include some experiential shots with models, yeah. for instance. So separate them in sections or separate pages on your website. Right. Because the client who is looking for one is not looking for the other. Very true. Right. So look at it from the point of view of the client, not from your point of view. Very true. And when the client is, uh, you keep their interest in mind, you are more likely to uh, land a, pro a contract rather than putting everything together. Right? Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, the third, uh, the other thing that I feel is very critical is people need to have final processed images. Very, very true. Hundred yeah. percent finished images, no work in progress, no nothing, absolutely ready to sell. And that is uh, very, very correct. Why? Because you will not be there to explain yeah. to your uh, end user that why is the image looking like that. So there is a question by Shrest who's asking, uh, I work for a known brand, do I need to take permission from them while sharing my work to new clients or to agencies? And if not, then I care. If I, if I don't take permissions, uh, do I get into trouble? Is their product uh, sensitive? Is it available commercially in the market or not available? So let's take both scenarios. So let's say um, you work for an FMCG company. I don't know what you mean by brand. Let's say you work for an FMCG company and they make, uh, let's say it's Nestle, they make products that they sell in the market. Mm -hmm. Now, you could have created that work or that portfolio by buying things from the market. So mm -hmm. these, are, these mm -hmm. are open things. You don't have to worry about secrecy or things like that. But if you've shot something which is not yet launched. Mm -hmm. Something which is yet to come out. Yet to come out or something which is uh, made only for a select group of customers. Uh, in that case, yes, you do have to take permission. Uh, ideally, if you have commercially shot it for them, your contract should say that you have the right to use it yeah. as in your portfolio. Not for commercial sale, no. but for visual description of your work also check with yeah. your clients whether there's an ipr on it yeah. or or anything that can actually affect the client's uh, product line uh, be very careful about that and then only publish it in all the years i've done uh, photography or any visual work um, my contract with them has clearly stated that i own copyright right right uh, but I will. I promise not to sell this work to other people, uh, and not use it for commercial gain. But I can use it for display on my website, display in my portfolios, and all other group companies that are associated with me. They can use it as a part Very of true. their portfolio. Yeah. So this is right off the, I mean, right off the bat before they pay me advance or whatever. My terms are very clear in front of them. Right. Uh, after that, if they say that, you know, yes, you shot it, but you can't use it. All I do is show them the piece of paper, <laughs> guys, you signed here yeah. or you paid me and that is the agreement of the contract. So if you have a contract, great. Uh, if you are in a sensitive position and if you feel that you will get into trouble with the company, then it's best not to go in that direction unless it's commercially available, the product is available and you could have shot it outside anywhere. So Very it true. doesn't really matter in that case. Awesome. Uh, I think uh, that's pretty much answering all the questions and it has been an interesting, interesting session. I Absolutely. hope people now start creating better portfolios and posting, I would say, finished images with processes or with stories online and we get to see more better portfolios when we ask for them. Which we Absolutely, do. we do. So guys, if you are interested in working with us, get your portfolios ready, share it with us so that we can also actually pitch you ahead and work with you in future and if you guys are looking out for collaborations please do connect with us dm us on at shootguru on instagram or at kabirlal on instagram yeah 
and of course you can also put it in the comment sections of this video and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you guys for attending this uh, live session it was an impromptu session today and we hope that we make these sessions more interesting and if you have any topics that you want us to uh, cover in future please put them in the comment section we will definitely take them up absolutely and uh, one last word especially if you're not in uh, delhi ncr you're yeah. in other parts of the country wherever you are and if you are interested in collaborating and interested in working we always get commercial work outside uh, delhi ncr all over the country and we, we are looking for good people to partner with so uh, stay in touch uh, keep watching and we will be in touch back ahead with more amazing stuff very very soon